Hey everybody, it's Monday. Welcome to the 734. I'm Jason DeRussia. Nice to be hanging out with you back in the studio today. Uh, I was home on Friday. Uh, that was kind of fun. It's not bad. Tell you what, those of you who love this working from home thing, I get it. And the coolest thing, I don't know if you guys noticed that, no pants. When you do the news from home, you don't have to wear pants. Let's get you started with today's weather. It's not true. I was wearing pants. Come on. Uh, whoa, look at this forecast. Uh, it's going to be hot, super hot today. Very windy this afternoon, too. Hot and humid. At noon, we'll almost be to 90. This afternoon, we'll be in the 90s. Very windy. And then tonight, muggy, gross. 90 should feel like 100. Let's talk about the heat. It is the hottest day of the year. We know most kids are done with school right now. Swimming pools still closed. They'll open up on Wednesday, I think. Swimming pools open up a uh, limited capacity. But we wanted to know what are you going to do? How are you going to beat the heat today? Are you looking to maybe head to a lake where you can kind of jump in the lake? And by the way, I've been telling most of you people to jump in the lake for some time. That's what I did most of my weekend, telling people on Facebook to jump in the lake. Uh, do you have AC? Do you have a window unit? Do you have the real deal? So what are you doing today to beat the heat? A lot of the stuff we normally do is not available to us, you know, going through the mall or whatever. Uh, I guess some malls are open. But anyway, uh, let us know. Are you excited about the heat? Some people dig it. Um, yeah, so we'll share some of your thoughts in a couple minutes. Let's get you updated on the news on this Monday morning. Thousands are expected to pay their respects to George Floyd in Texas today. Uh, I think this is going to be really emotional. A six hour public viewing held at a Houston church today. Uh, you know, visitors have to wear a mask. They put some dividers in to uh, create social distancing space. George Floyd's funeral and burial will be tomorrow. He was killed, of course, when a former Minneapolis police officer kept his knee on his neck during an arrest two weeks ago. Derek Chauvin charged with second degree murder in Floyd's death. He has not gone before a judge yet. And so today will be his first time before a judge and we'll see what happens there. Three other former officers have been charged with aiding and abetting murder. Former Vice President Joe Biden plans on traveling to Texas today. He is expected to meet with George Floyd's family, and then he will record a message for tomorrow's funeral. WCCO also in Houston for George Floyd's funeral. Our Jeff Wagner begins live coverage this evening on WCCO and streaming at CBSN Minnesota. Calls over the weekend really have escalated to defund and dismantle. That's the terminology people are using when they're talking about the Minneapolis Police Department. And a majority of city council members came forward and said, yes, we are on board. Not just a majority, a veto-proof majority. So they can essentially run the agenda here. It is a bold step. Uh, some might think it's a step too far. But many people are wondering, what, what does this mean? Defund, most people think defund means wiping out a budget entirely. And dismantle means you take it apart. Well, let's break it down. Minneapolis wouldn't be the first city in the country to quote unquote dismantle its police department. What this means is essentially taking the department apart, reevaluating what should stay. How should we protect ourselves? How should we respond to medical emergencies or mental health emergencies? Reimagining it. Nine out of the 13 city council stood up at a rally yesterday vowing their commitment to make it ha happen. Council member Philippe Cunningham highlighted what defunding, defunding the department could look like. And basically, defund doesn't mean wipe out the budget. It means take some of the budget, reroute it to serve youth programs, mental health services, and addiction treatment. These are not the right response for a myriad of issues. Mental health crises, domestic violence calls, opioid overdoses. Mayor Jacob Fry says he does support reform. He said he supports a lot of these things that the council is talking about, but he does not support complete abolishment of the police department. This morning, state lawmakers plan on touring some of the damage in North Minneapolis. If you haven't been up there yet, it is uh, very difficult along parts of Broadway Avenue. Dozens of buildings set on fire, some vandalized in riots. City of Minneapolis now estimating between 100 and 150 million dollars in damage from all this. I've read estimates as high as 500 million dollars. There's a lot of damage throughout the city to pay to fix. Later today, Governor Tim Walz is touring St. Paul businesses on University Avenue, Midway neighborhood near Allianz Field. Uh, look at the damage here. 
In St. Paul, they have a tally of more than 170 businesses damaged or destroyed. And again, that number likely to grow. Minnesota is going to start the next phase of reopening later this week. Have you gone to any patios yet? Have you eaten uh, outside at a restaurant? Starting Wednesday, restaurants will let you in. Dine-in customers at 50% capacity limit. You've got to have reservations. How about the gym? Are you looking to go back to Lifetime or Snap Fitness or any of that? I know a lot of people anxious for that. Uh, quarter capacity, no more than 250 people in there. Movie theaters will be allowed to reopen. We don't know if they will, but they'll be allowed to reopen at limited capacity. Swimming pools too, sporting events, uh, bowling alleys, rec centers, things like that will reopen. Mall of America reopening on Wednesday as well. Uh, this got kind of messed up because uh, the mall was going to reopen on June 1st, but uh, that was the Monday after all of the unrest in the Twin Cities and the light rail line was shut down. And a lot of people who work at Mall of America take the light rail to get to work. So uh, they decided just to keep the mall closed and not to have the mall uh, become perhaps a, a target of protest. So they had to shut down. It's been closed for nearly three months because of COVID-19. But Wednesday opening up in New York City, as many as 400,000 people could go back to work today as that city takes its first steps to reopen. Of course, all of these people will not go back. Many corporations saying we're going to stay in a work from home mode until uh, Labor Day. It's what many big companies have been saying. But manufacturing, construction companies go back to work, some curbside retail. New York City was really hit hard by the pandemic. More than 30,000 people died, most of them in that city. Uh, New York City reported just 84 new cases on Friday. That's the lowest number they'd seen in nearly three months. Tropical storm Cristobal made landfall in southeast Louisiana last night, not far from the mouth of the Mississippi River. Storm brought high winds, pounding rain, flooding to parts of Mississippi and Alabama. Cristobal has been downgraded to a tropical depression this morning. Storm is on track to impact us here in Minnesota and in Wisconsin in the next couple of days, which that storm track is pretty epic when you look at that on, on uh, radar. Let's get back to today's talker. Our question is, what are we going to do uh, to beat the heat? And our producer, Chris, is supposed to tell me what the people are saying. But Chris forgot. So what I'm going to do is go to Facebook. Thanks a lot, Chris. Doing a hell of a job back there, as usual. That's fine. You know, I did this from home, and it seemed to work better. All right, here we go. What are people saying? Pam Williams is going to keep the blinds closed to keep cool with the air on. I like that. Uh, people are not going out yet. Melinda, everyone's saying hi to Matt. Is Matt Brickman in here? Why are people saying hi to Matt? What is happening? I don't know. There's like there's like six or seven comments. Hi, Matt Brickman. Oh, I bet the did the thing on the screen say Matt Brickman. Did you guys uh, mess that up? Are you sure? Are you positive? Yeah, the title. All right. I don't know. Lorraine is going to see the twins play. I don't know what's going on. There's 400 people in here watching this thing right now. Can somebody say hello to me or tell me what's going on? Oh, there's you. Producer finally shows up. Chris. All right, this was a bust. That's fine. You know what? We're doing our best. We're doing our best. Some days it's better than others. It's fine. It's the beauty of the internet. And the joy is that you guys can just send this to all your friends and say, watch what kind of a clown show WCCO and to Russia is. Uh, typical. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see if this thing is still on the air tomorrow. If it is, we'll be here at 734.